All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the live. And in today's live, we're gonna be answering some Amazon FBA questions. And I'm also going to reveal exactly how to go from zero to a million plus on Amazon FBA. Now, I think my mic is working. I just did the live and the live wasn't working previously. So um, audio is good now. All right, awesome. So yeah, I just finished the live in the Ecom Freedom uh, course and there weren't too many questions today. I do a live every single Saturday on the channel here. And then right before the um, right before the channel, I do it in the Econ Freedom X course. And so today, uh, I only did it for like 10 minutes because there weren't a lot of questions, surprisingly. Uh, you know, I mentor thousands of students and nobody goes to my live. So if you join, go to my live on Saturdays, then you'll basically be the only one and you'll get like a live mentorship call with me. So anyway, uh, let's see what we got here. All right, Steven, Cavalli, Mysterious Pete. Where are you guys from? Pirani. This, this live, guys, we're, we're going in. We're going in. Amazon FBA. That's it. We're taking over YouTube right here. There will be no other Amazon FBA live like this. Let's see what questions we get today. Howdy from the oil field in New Mexico. That's awesome, dude. How's the, the oil field? <laughs> That's crazy. San Diego, Poland, Switzerland, Sweden. Amazing. Las Vegas, Spain, New Jersey, LA, uh, Ocala, Florida. I've been to Ocala. I've been to Ocala. Jordan, Colorado, Fort McMurray. That's the, uh, the, the, the oil town. Lithuania, awesome. I was born in Latvia, really close. <clears throat> All right, Jack Lama, Jack Lama. Right on time. Hey, Dan, I finally managed to say 5K. Um, do you think it's a good startup capital after buying your course? Is it enough to launch the first product? Yeah, dude, I started with $1,800. 1800 all right? So what are you waiting for? Like, what are the excuses that you're making in your head? And how long are you gonna postpone your success? Uh, Finland, hey, what's up? Everyone's from Finland here. Cheyenne, Wyoming. What's up, did you, did you get the... No, no it didn't work. No. Uh, I got a few buddies over, but... Um, here, let me, let me see, let me see. All right, guys, ask me some questions on Amazon. You gotta press the button to turn it on. Yeah, the ball around button. Yeah, yeah, yeah not working. Nothing happened. Dude, that's not cool. All right, guys, ask me some questions. I'll take a look right now, 20 seconds, hold on. I gotta fix the, the sauna. The, the boys are trying to turn on the sauna and it's not working. <laughs> it's a thing in Finland to turn on the sauna. All right, uh, let me see. But yeah, go, ask me anything with Amazon, leave it in the chat, I will go and try to answer every single question. Uh, yeah, it's on now. It's on. Yep. Yep, try it, if not, then whatever. All right, let's get back to the chat here. All right, guys, let's see. I got it open, scroll up. Okay, Lexington, Kentucky, uh, Treasure Coast, Florida, Kitchener, Canada, I've been there, Robert from Scotland. Why does Amazon make it impossible to list a product on Amazon? It, what do you mean impossible? It's not that difficult. Um, why do they make it so damn hard to list a simple product on a marketplace? Ask yourself this question, is it easy to list a product on Amazon? Yes, you literally just create a list listing and send in your shipment. <laughs> oh man, what's the best method to relaunch a product? I was out of stock for one week and now it is very hard to get up again. So um, the best method to relaunch a product is honestly, like the, the better your product is compared to the rest of your competition, the more, the easier it will be for you to launch and you're not gonna have to rely on a launch service. So like I always talk about the 20% rule, if you've got the 20% rule going, then you know, if your product is 20% better than your competitors through differentiation, through improving the product, you know, you've spoken to your supplier and you've done what you could to actually make yours stand out compared to the rest, you're not gonna have to rely on uh, launch methods. You're not gonna rely on like giveaway coupons and things like that. So, yeah. Should I sell a trending product that may only have a two to five dollar profit? I wouldn't, no. Uh, can I sell on European Amazon if I live in the US? 
yes, you can. You just need a VAT. Uh, and you only need the VAT after a certain amount of revenue. So after you hit about, I think it's 80 or 90,000 a year. So you have to worry about that when you start, which is the awesome thing. You can just focus on making money and you can start. Uh, did you change your legal name from Vasily F. Sebast for Smarter Business and Branding because your original surname was Vasily uh, No, I've never changed my name. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's too hard for people to say it. So, yeah. Did you turn it on? Oops. Uh, all right, well, whatever. Yeah. What's a VAT? It's a value added tax. So it's like a, in Europe, they have this thing called VAT and basically uh, it's a tax that people have to pay. And also if you register for a business like an LLC or a corporation, then you get uh, a VAT. So when will your one-on-one -on -one Skype calls be? Which ones are you talking about? There is a seller selling counterfeit Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Balenciaga. Amazon won't remove them. Uh, who do I go to get them off? They're taking sales. Are you selling Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Balenciaga? What are you doing selling that? Um, <laughs> how to deal with LLC in Finland? I don't have to deal with LLC in Finland personally, but you know you can just go and uh, you know well, how do you how do you make an LLC in Finland? Just there are services for that. You can look it up. Yeah, dude, you, you can look it up. If you, okay, if you have a problem with making LLC in your country, you go on Google, you type in, how do I get a business license in and put your country in there? And then Google is your best friend. It's going to help you. Um, what are your thoughts about selling cosmetics or cosmetic accessories? Anything in this category banned? Uh, customs restrictions. You're going to encounter a lot of problems with shipping your product uh, from China. And you'll see that if it's anything that goes in someone's face, then it's going to have a lot of problems with like, you know, getting into the country and also if your product, you know, if if you buy like some kind of a face cream from China and it turns out the cream is made of hydrochloric acid and your customer burns that burns their whole face off, then you're going to get sued while well, your business is going to get sued. But and Amazon's going to remove your product. So I would just stay away. The ones for your Facebook students. Yeah. So those are being given away at the end of uh, April, uh, Leonard. The Skype calls you're talking about. Yeah, so right now I'm doing like a survey in my in my course group in the Econ Freedom course, uh, which the link for is below. But I'm doing the uh, I'm doing a survey there where I'm trying to find out more about everybody's stories because I'm doing personal one-on-one -on -one case studies with people where I'm gonna do live or where I'm gonna do Skype calls like once a week with specific people because I want to bring them to success. And so I'm doing that in the Econ Freedom course. So if you want that, then join the course. Link is below. Um, is it easy to sell on Amazon US from the UK? Yes, it is. You can. Guys, if you're, if you're from any country in the world that's accepted on Amazon, like if you're on the list of accepted countries, then you can sell on any marketplace. It doesn't matter. Uh, the link to what? What do you need the link to? ULMF bunny. <laughs> what PPC campaigns do you recommend in ranking to page one? Uh, the best is exact match campaign, and I would try three. The first campaign you try is just for the top search keyword on Keyword Scout, Jungle Scout Keyword Scout, uh, the one with the highest search volume. So you just literally put 50 to hundred dollars uh, for that keyword. Okay. And you let that run. And if that's not ranking you create a second campaign for the top three or four keywords. And then if that doesn't help you create a third campaign for the top five to six keywords, if that doesn't help you then create a fourth campaign between the third and 10th keywords, because then you're not ranking. That means that if, if you did ran three PPC campaigns, exact match, you're not ranked on page one. That means your listing isn't optimized. Your product is, quite frankly, shit, or um, your uh, keywords are too competitive. So you can just go and, uh, you know, you can actually rank using secondary keywords and that will help you because sales velocity is what matters on Amazon. And so uh, what sales velocity is, is, you know, if you're, let's, if someone's selling five units a day and someone is selling, some other person is selling 10 units a day, well, the one selling 10 units a day is going to get ranked a lot better for all keywords uh, associated with their product because that's how Amazon works. The more you're selling, the more they rank, the better they rank you because they know that you're obviously um, a good product. Leonard, Leonard saying, if I'm from Sweden, should I move to the US and start my bank account or business there to avoid the heavy 50% taxes and VAT here? Uh, no. Let me, what's the corporate tax in Sweden? It's very interesting. Let me Google that. Same as Finland? Same as Finland? I think so. It's 24, uh, it's 22%. So no, you should not move to the U.S. for uh, because the corporate tax rate in the U.S. is actually higher. Corporate tax in the U.S. Let me see. Yeah, it's it's 21 percent. The corporate tax in the U.S. is actually the exact same as in uh, in Sweden. So moving and by the way, moving somewhere just for taxes is pretty stupid. Uh, 
For beginners, do you recommend for US to get a trademark? If so, what's that? No, you don't need to worry about getting a trademark. Uh, I need the link to your Amazon FBA course. It's right here, econfreedom.com slash Amazon. All right, I don't know, wait, why didn't it work? Anyway, the link is the, below, the link is down below. When you make over 5,000 in profit, they take 50%. No, they don't, Leonard, that's not true. Uh, there's a corporate tax, but you have to refer to the taxes in your country. You can always Google it. Uh, there's a difference between corporate tax and personal taxes, and you're getting them confused. I'm just getting interested in this so I can leave the oil field work, says M. Barton. How long would it on average to generate? How long would it be on average to generate positive cash flow with FBA? It's all on you, man. It's like if you sign up for the gym and you know you go up to the person that got you your gym membership who works there. They're like, hey, dude, how long is it going to be for me to lose my fat and for me to get fit? It's the same thing, right? What are they going to tell you? Well, obviously, it depends on your workouts, depends on your diet. There's a lot of things it depends on. And obviously, following the correct information. So if you're watching my YouTube channel, then that's an amazing start. Uh, should branding be implemented from the start or should you test sales before investing in graphic design and packaging? No, do not sell a product without any graphic design and packaging because then you're selling like... Chinese crap and people on Amazon hate Chinese crap uh, unless you want to compete in a, in a permanent price war then you know you need a logo you need some kind of a branding you need some kind of branding on your product because if you don't then there's no point someone can just go on AliExpress and buy it most people are not going to do it they don't know what AliExpress is but you get my point so do you recommend LLC or S Corp for Amazon business LLC if you're in the US Favorite product research method? My favorite one, I've actually talked about it a lot on my YouTube channel, but it's very, it, it's actually in the Ecom Freedom course. There's a few in there. I think there's six that I made or seven. Uh, sh so yeah, that's where I have my favorite research methods, but they're also in my product research videos on my channel here. You guys can go check them out. So watch that after this live, uh, but do not miss the info in this live because it's, it's only getting better from now. The other suppliers I found look super cheap, but should I still contact them just to have info and prices to compare to? Um, let me see. The other spies have shows the financial stuff. prices. What do you mean? I don't really have context to your question. How do I get more sales? Asks Emilio. Amazon says to lower the prices, but if I keep lowering prices, I'm basically not making any money. Um, yeah, no. Do not listen to Amazon. Uh, set your price to uh, equal to the perceived value of your product. So if you're selling a premium product, you know, put it higher than everybody else. If you're on the low end of the market, then put it lower. You know, it all depends on the on the value. The perceived value has to coincide with the actual value of your product. Um, okay, I've seen a recent YouTube video saying not to use barcodes mainly or nationwide barcodes because they say, they say they're not GS1 even though they claim to be and Amazon could remove the listing in the future. Uh, Jordan, you need to understand that you just need to focus on making your first $1,000 on Amazon, your first $10,000 on Amazon. Don't focus on, you know, uh, which barcode you should get from somewhere. Barcodes Mania works, nationwide barcodes works, just one works, right? And what I always say is, uh, I've personally used nationwide barcodes and barcodes Mania since the very beginning, and I've never, ever, ever had any issue. I've never had a student have any issue. Did you guys get barcodes from uh, barcodes Mania or nationwide? Yeah, we did. From nationwide? Nationwide? No, barcode Mania. No problems? No problems. No problems. All right, so I've got, I've got two of my students right here. They've used, uh, uh, they got barcodes from barcodes Mania. And uh, yeah, like no problems. I've never heard of anybody. So you know, you, the, your focus should be on making money, not on trying to figure out which barcode website is legit and which barcode website isn't legit. They all work. If I if if you know if I knew if I knew that for somebody like if if uh, they were telling me that it wasn't you know they had a problem, then I would tell you guys. But I've never had a problem, and nobody had a problem. So I think it's just scare tactics that people try to do and that YouTubers try to do to try to. Uh, ruin people's focus on what actually matters. Uh, Isaiah says, Dan, just wanted to say you've completely changed my life. Although I failed two times already with FBA through my own mistakes, I wanted to thank you for changing my perspective. Uh, dude, that's awesome. That's the most important part is changing perspective. If I can get you to change your perspective, then I'm filling my life mission, which is to wake people up. So that's awesome. Uh, Matthew Archie says, With, within the course, the storefront met method is included in the PDFs for the best sellers list. Uh, Matthew, I think they're not in the course, but you are, so. Dan, I'm having a difficult time finding legit looking suppliers in Alibaba. I can only find one that looks like they make what I'm wanting to produce. Sometimes it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard and uh, it really depends on the, like if, if the product is new in China, if the product is new in China, then obviously it's gonna be harder to 
to find a supplier for it. So, is this live stream going to be about building a brand? Yes, it will. Yes, it is. Obviously, uh, after we get through the questions. Greetings from Germany. Greetings from Finland. <laughs> Someone said it's still Chinese crap, but with branding and nice packaging. Uh, well, then, I mean, with that argument, Max, that means that everything in your house is Chinese crap, including the clothes that you're wearing. Burn. <laughs> you got, you know, you get like smart asses on the live. It's funny. Um, all right. Hello again, Dan from Detroit. Detroit, are you still offering the mentorship with your course? I know you had said you would be ending it at some point. Yeah. So about the mentorship, basically, um, I'm introducing in uh so right now if you join you do get my um uh <laughs> even the car is chinese crap in the end yeah pretty much i mean it's either made in mexico and you know in china whatever um but uh, somebody asked about the mentorship so right now if you do if you join then you do get my unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentorship but what i'm doing is because my mission is to get 10,000 people uh to complete financial freedom and personal freedom uh with amazon fba i obviously can't do it alone so i, I have a certification uh, I'm introducing a certification method in the course where uh, I'm going to have my best uh, students become coaches through like a certification method. And so through the, those coaches will be the ones that will be doing the mentoring in the future. Uh, it's going to be grandfathered in for everybody that's already joined. And if you join uh, right now as I'm making this video. So if you don't want to miss out on my mentorship, then join the course because I am introducing coaches soon. And it's going to be, you're still going to have access to me, of course, every single Saturday on the live Q&A and you can message me. But if you really want that one-on-one -on -one attention, then you really should join right now. The link is below. Wholesale is the way to go, says Wholesale Direct. Buy us much? Uh, <laughs> if you run out of stock, do you close the listing or what actions do you take? Um, yeah, you close the listing. That's what I do. You just close the listing and that way you have a better chance at keeping your BSR. So have you guys run out of stock for your product? Yeah. So what did you guys do? Did you close your listing? Yeah, we closed it. And uh, you closed it? Yeah. And it was like fine? Yeah. Did you have to relaunch or? No, we are on the set on the first page when we started again. How long did it? So, okay. So um, can I say your name? Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, Connie and Bjorn uh, right here, they're, they're my friends here from Finland. So they joined the course uh, when? Like a year now. Nine months ago. So they joined nine months ago. And basically I was asking, since they're right here, they're over my house. Um, I was asking about uh, if they have a rent of stock and, and uh, uh, they said that, yeah, they did. And so they closed the listing and they were out of stock for two weeks. two weeks. Two weeks they were out of stock. And then as soon as they got back in stock, they were back on the first page, second place, right? Not second place, but in the middle somewhere. In the middle somewhere, That's but at least on the first page. Yeah, on the first page. And so you started getting sales again. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what you do. Um, sometimes though, I have, I'm, I've closed the listing and sometimes like if it's a really, um, uh, if, if it's a really like competitive product, then, and a lot of competitor, new competitors come in, then you're gonna come back when you reopen the listing and it's gonna be like on page seven. So, you know, but then you can just relaunch using PPC. If you want, you can do a coupon giveaway, although I wouldn't recommend it anymore. Uh, have you had a chance to test Jungle Scout's new supplier database feature? Can it be trusted? Yes, it's amazing. And I have a video that I'm making with uh, the Jungle Scout CEO, Greg Mercer, on Tuesday. Um, so um, we're going to talk about supp supplier database, and he's going to give his best advice to finding uh, quality, reputable suppliers for Amazon. Um, the guy that said uh, about Chinese crap, he's like, I was only joking. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everyone says. I was using my personal bank account when starting FBA. Now, should I continue using that one and just set myself up another personal bank account? Uh, you should get a business bank account. Just get an LLC and you can open a business bank account with that. That way you're not liable in case, you know, something goes wrong with your business. So what is your dream car? The ones that I have now. Uh, Audi S5 convertible and I got a lifted truck parked in California somewhere right now in storage because um, the purpose of life is not to buy expensive cars uh, get brand registry before releasing a product or not as a beginner no there's do not get brand registry before releasing a product how are you gonna get brand registry if you don't even know if the product that you're doing is successful Dan, if my competitors are selling a product for $16 but my suppliers want to sell me the product for $7 plus $5 DHL air shipping should I be able to bargain down to $5 for the product plus shipping yes absolutely plus your $5 DHL air shipping sounds like a big scam to me 
Um, it's almost the price of the product. And sometimes it is, it depends. So how shipping is calculated, it's based on two things, the weight and the volume. And so the volume is the size and the weight is you know how much it weighs. So if it doesn't weigh a lot, but it's like a big foam thing and it's really big, it's gonna be really expensive to ship by air. Sea shipping is always cheap, but to be honest, a huge pain in the ass. Uh, all, a lot of the time. So if you can, always try shipping air, especially if you're ordering under 2,000 units. Let me see. Can I sell on Amazon.com in Canada? Yes, you can. Uh, that's what I, I'm Canadian. I've been selling on Amazon.com, you know, for years now. So what's your, with, with your case studies, you're gonna start meeting up with more students for those. Yeah, so I'm doing case studies on my channel where I'm gonna be, I'm gonna use it for content as well. And I'm gonna be personally choosing students in my course uh, to like mentor them live. We're going to be meeting up on Skype or in person or whatever. And so, um, yeah, like for example, Bjorn and Connie, we're going to do a case study. And so, um, I'm going to like help them out and help them scale their Amazon business. And so then, uh, we can make some content and then I'm going to, you know, uh, we're going to talk about the story and everything like that, but that's what I'm doing. So if you join Econ Freedom, then you have a chance to become one of my personal, uh, mentees, I guess, or like, uh, you know, you get a case study with me. So, uh, yeah, where I'm like, you know, personally responsible for your success. Uh, can I put my social media on my packaging and insert cards? Um, yes, you can, of course. Sorry, it takes a while to process sometimes. Do you sell on eBay? Uh, I have some products on eBay using an extension, but it's like I've, I set it up a long time ago and I don't really do it. No, eBay is long gone. What would you say DHL Air costs? It's six to seven dollars per kilogram, so get the cost or for, um, you have to get your supplier to send you the weight. So let's say it's 200 kilograms. So you do 200, uh, you know, divide the shipping cost. Let's say they tell you it's $1,500. So divide $1,500 by uh, uh, 200. And if it's, you know, under six to seven, that means it's a good price. If it's over six to seven, that means that, you know, it's obviously higher than it should be. <clears throat> do you have tips for inventing a brand name? Uh, yes, I do. So. A lot of the, you know, I struggle with this a lot with inventing a good brand name, uh, but it kind of, I got better at it over time. And so what I recommend is like, you know, don't bang your head against the wall, just forget about it and just, and just kind of like go out, you know, go through your day, go through the week and it's going to eventually pop in your head and you're going to realize, wait, like that's actually good. Like think about it from your customer's perspective, from your, uh, from your ideal customer's perspective. And, you know, think about it from them. Like what, if they're looking for your product on uh, and they're typing in the keywords on Amazon and they're trying to find your product. Um, think about the kind of brand that they would jump at and they would make them click in the thir in like the half a second that you have to get the person's attention. So that's the brand name that you should do. Do you still come to Vancouver? No, I'm never coming there again. Uh, although the mountains are nice. So I'm probably going to go back to Whistler uh, for skiing. For the mentorship live, I can provide my business and actor resumes to beat out the competition. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't know. It depends. You got to submit the survey. There's a survey right now where I'm choosing, you know, people to like really, uh, have personal, uh, Skype calls every single week in Econ Freedom right now. So, um, yeah, it depends on the survey. So go fill out the survey and then, you know, you can go. Are you sure that revenue in the Jungle Scout web app should be between 6,000 and 40,000? Why? Uh, Remintus, it sounds like you watched one of my product research videos where I did that. I always switch it up in all the videos. So, you know, make sure to like realize that no, it doesn't have to be that. Um, do you do anything with Shopify and integrated with Amazon and other good suppliers that you use in the US? Uh, yeah, I do. So I have a big Shopify brand right now that I'm growing and I'm launching the product. I'm currently launching the product on Amazon, US, uh, UK and Germany. So, but I do have my own, I'm using my own fulfillment warehouse for the Amazon. I mean, for the, for the Shopify side of things. Um, can I sell on Amazon if I'm 14? <laughs> I have a bank account debit card and my parents agree to let me do it. Uh, yeah, you can, but you have to sign up under your parents, uh, credit card under your mom's name or your dad's name and under your parents account. It can't be under your name. In the one-on-one -on -one Skype mentorship, will you keep the product identity hidden when you release it to YouTube? Uh, yeah, probably. It depends on like the, 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 I guess the people, but probably would make sense to keep the product private, I guess. Yeah, because yeah, then you don't want a bunch of people jumping on. But you know what's funny is that even if even if I did like an interview with a student and we revealed the student's product, people only watch YouTube videos. They don't take any action. They don't take any. They're like, oh, okay, cool. 
they don't take any action. You know, the, the actual time it takes to go and find a product and like launch it on Amazon and stuff like, you know, <laughs> you know, like 99% of people won't do it. They're just dreaming. So are you sure your course will help me gain success if I follow your steps? <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you it's the best Amazon FBA course in the world. I can tell you my mentorship is the best mentorship in the world. But like I said, if you go to a gym, are you going to ask this gym secretary or the gym owner if that if like, you know, they're really sure that you're going to get a six pack? <laughs> Any tips for a 16 year old newbie? Yeah, dude, read books and uh, watch my videos. Watch my videos on Amazon, watch my videos on Shopify and get started now because, you know, if you have a, if you have a laptop, and internet connection, you can really, you know, especially you're 16, you have so much time. You have so much time. So, um, yeah, read books, though. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, read that. Millionaire Fastlane, um, Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, yeah, just start with those. How do you track your cash flow in your company? Using a profit first system? Oh, the, the guy that asked me about if I'm sure he's gonna gain success, he's like, lol, just asking, Dan. <laughs> they always get so defensive. <laughs> oh, man. Someone asked me to do conspiracy theories on, on live. Maybe I should do conspiracy theories today. Dan, how often do you update your course? Often. Uh, right now, it's right now as it stands, it's completely updated. And it's, if you join, you'll see what I mean. And you can ask anybody who joined. It's got the best content at the best price. And the only one, the only course that where I've personally mentored my students for like two years and I didn't take it away randomly like many others. So how to go from a million to zero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> launch fidget spinners or uh, what else? Milestone blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you track your calories you eat a day? No, I don't. Uh, no. I used to, though. I think it's good for like six months to a year. Um, how do I ship products to Amazon FBA in Canada if I'm in the US? I tried it, but the carriers don't take the labels. They say it's missing a bar. Okay, Emilio, are you watching? Uh, are you watching like, 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 how are you? You know, it shouldn't be hard. You just take the shipping label from Amazon and you put it on your product, uh, on your on your box, and you ship it to Canada. That's it. You have your supplier do it if they're Chi if they're Chinese. Are you Canadian? Uh, yes, I'm Canadian, but I, I was not born in Canada. Uh, I was born in uh, Latvia. Any advice for launching your first product? Yeah, the the better you make your product from the beginning, and the better your listing is, the easier it is to launch. And a lot of the times, you won't even have to do any special launch strategy or any coupon giveaway or any PPC launch. It's just going to start selling. What is the best way to sell Shopify or Amazon, and why? Two completely different income streams, uh, both amazing to start. Uh, you really have to choose one, and then stick with it and set a goal. Like, okay, um, you really have to set a goal. Uh, I'm gonna make $10,000 a month, let's say. So I set a goal, I started in March 2017 with Amazon FBA, and I set a goal for myself that by, was it by June 2017, I was gonna make $10,000 a month on Amazon revenue, and I was making more than 30. So, you know, you gotta set a goal, and you have to stick with it, and then don't even think about the other income stream. With Shopify, you have to learn Facebook ads. With Amazon, uh, you don't have to learn any Facebook ads, but you do have to invest in inventory, so. How many hours a week do you put into FBA? To be honest with you, not that much. Uh, you know, once you have a product up and running, it's really passive. All you have to do is reorder your product, uh, I guess. And you know, maybe you get some negative reviews sometimes. You can have a VA respond to your reviews. But do you have any plans to move from Canada in the future or do you want this to be your main home forever? I don't live in Canada. I live in Finland. Uh, that's why it's night here, as you can see. Okay. Is it a good idea to sell homemade products on Amazon to differentiate from other products? What do you mean homemade products? Like products that you're making in your kitchen? I don't understand. You should launch barbecue gloves. Uh, that's, a, that's another way to go from a million to zero. <laughs> uh, yes, conspiracy theories to add some spice to it. I wonder what, oh, Clavio or Aweber for email marketing? To be honest, dude, uh, are you asking for Shopify? 
Aweber and MailChimp have terrible deliverability rates. Active Campaign is the Active Campaign and Fusionsoft are what the big boys are using. How much money do you need to start with Shopify? Uh, I have a video coming out answering exactly that question this week, so stay tuned for that. Getting reviews has really been slowing me down. Should I go ahead and launch with two reviews? Um, well, I would say two to three reviews is like the limit of social proof. If you have two to three reviews, then you have enough social proof to really start. Um, you know, but don't launch if your product is bad or if your product is if your listing is not optimized, right? All these things have to be in check before you launch. Before you, especially if you're doing a coupon giveaway, or you risk giving away a ton of coupons, a ton of products, and they're not gonna, you know, bring you any return. Uh, was 9/11 an inside job? Uh, to be honest, man, that's like the most like OG conspiracy theory, and like it's boring at this point. It's overdone. Can I launch phones for Amazon, dude? You keep asking stupid questions, Emilio. That's the thing I basically did was when sending them to warehouses in the U.S., I packaged the products, add labels, then put in a box. And... All right, Emilio, you go on Amazon, you go to your shipping plan, uh, and you create the shipping plan. You take the label from the shipping plan and you put it on, you have your supplier put it on the carton and you just send it and that's it. How long do products stay profitable? It all depends. It depends on every single market, depends on every single uh, niche. It can stay profitable for years. It can stay profitable for only a season. Uh, you know, and with that, when that's the case, then obviously it turns out to be a seasonal product. So, let me see. All right, Caesar Andre asks, hello Dan, your opinion on new products. It's an invention of my, my wife. Wait, wait listen, listen to this question. Listen. Uh, Caesar asks, hello Dan, your opinion on my new product. It's in my wife's invention, patented for Romania and Europe for newborn care. What will be the first steps to start selling it on US Amazon? Uh, it's pan wait, it's patented in Romania and Europe? Uh, is it like a common, is it like a common pro Anyway, I thought it would be way funnier than that. No, is it like a common product? Or, or what? Because the problem with your, there, someone else said it, no one's searching for your product. If it's a brand new invention, you know, how do you know that there's market demand? And go on keyword scale, go on Google Trends and see if people are searching for something like that. So. All right, let's see what else we got. Do you also sell in Europe? Yes. Do you always go with air shipping? No, not always. Are you Pakistani? <laughs> someone asked me if I'm Pakistani. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Clearly, <laughs> someone's like he's not Pakistan. <laughs> um, let's see. Have you ever used? Uh, no, I've never used that. Okay, this obviously depends on the success of your products. But how much money would you save, or how many products would it take to quit my nine to five job? That all depends. It all depends on, you know, your first product can come in and it can be a total failure or it can be a complete success uh, or it can be something in between. You know, you really can't predict it. But right now we're going to get into the how to really build a million dollar brand on Amazon and e-commerce brand in general. And so through the years I've learned how to do that, uh, you know, selling on Amazon, on Shopify. And so I'm going to get into that right now. We're at 33 minutes, so that's perfect. Here, we'll take a few more questions. Where can I find the mentorship survey you're talking about? It's only available to Econ Freedom course members. So you have to join the course and then it's in the Facebook group. It's an announcement in there. So how much can you make in profit the first month on Amazon starting with a thousand? Pedro, Pedro, it all depends on you. You know, if you launch your product, it's all good. You have the correct, correct information. You know, you invest in yourself. You're taking a course and the Econ Freedom course, then, you know, your chances of success are maximized. But if you're trying to do this all yourself, it's like walking through a jungle in the dark and you've got all these like bugs flying around and these you know creatures hiding in the dark and you don't know if you're gonna trip over a branch and fall. You know, you don't know if some, I don't know, what's the dangerous animal in the jungle? Uh, <laughs> a tiger is gonna come and eat you, you know? And it can happen, right? So it all depends on you, but I've had students, you know, in the first month, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, uh, unfortunately, most people, they don't take any action. So, you know, most people, they don't even launch a product on Amazon because of fear. So, how long did it take you guys to launch a product on Amazon? Three from months. Three months it took. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and that was from like, uh, because of the supplier or? Yeah. Or it took you that long to do product research? No, not the product research, it took like three weeks, three weeks. Okay. Yeah. How much were you spending on product research? 
Kind of. Quite a lot in the beginning. But we were, too, we were like kind of busy also. So. Okay, so like a few hours a night? A few hours yeah, a night. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so basically, it took uh, Connie and Bjorn over here, it took them three months to launch a product. Um, and so mostly, I guess, it was the shipping time and while the time came in. And, and some sample issues. Sample issues, okay. Got it. Is it possible to go from 6,000 to a million per year in two to three years? Yes, absolutely. I actually did that myself. Age of your youngest student, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, are these numbers you quote profits or do they all go to Amazon fees? No, a million dollars do not go to Amazon fees, dandelion. Uh, <laughs> the questions, man. How do you stop from negative thinking beliefs and how do you start to think positively? Amazing video, amazing question. Um, everything's a battle in your own mind, Muhammad, and you gotta realize that you know, your whole, especially where you're at, you know, you're the, the close five people that you have, that you associate yourself with, you're the average of them and so, you know, if they're constantly pulling you down and they're constantly telling you you can't be who you want to be, it's because they've given up on their success already and they've given up on their dreams. So, you know, you just got to shut everything out. Watch my videos, read books, uh, you know, watch other uh, videos of the most successful people, uh, read biographies. Those are really inspiring. And that will really, you know, it starts to write down your goals every single day, every single day as if you've already achieved them. So like, I'm so happy now that I'm making $10,000 a month on Amazon. So that will really help you get into the right place in your head. And if you can do that long enough, then you will come out. And you know, before that you were drowning in the ocean, but eventually you'll slowly rise up and then you'll start, you'll start breathing and then eventually you'll have freedom. So, uh, Dan, can I visit you in Finland? Uh, well, not really. Is it true that mindset is the key to success with Amazon and online business? Yes, absolutely. Uh, how many Shopify brands did you go through to have the successful one you have now? Uh, to be honest with you, I've had a few failures and I've had a few failures with Amazon as well. And I still do. Failure is a natural part of entrepreneurship. So, you know, if you're not, if you're afraid of failure, you'll never be successful. And, and the thing is, failure is awesome because it teaches me what, what I, like, it, like a failure is way more valuable to me than a success because a success, okay, I'm making money. But with a failure, then it always tells me exactly what I shouldn't do in the future. So learn to embrace failure. Uh, what is your advice for beginners to make capital in order to start a personal business? Uh, so my advice is to get a job. You know, don't be afraid of getting a job if it's temporary. All right, just if you get a nine to five job and if it's shitty McDonald's or you know if it's whatever, like it's temporary. So as long as you know that and as long as you don't you know stay comfortable at McDonald's or you know cleaning windows like I was, I was cleaning windows. You know, you can go and watch my earliest videos uh, of me cleaning windows and you can see that's how I started. I quit my bank job, I was fed up and you know, I just wanted to succeed so bad and I wanted to start entrepreneurship that I started cleaning windows. And so that's made me who I am today. And I knew it was temporary even then. I knew that online business was the solution and it was the key to ultimate freedom and to my dreams, to the dream life. What was the hardest part of Amazon FBA business for you at the beginning? Um, well, finding a product. Finding a product is the hardest part of Amazon for sure, but you know, it's 90% of Amazon. If you find a good product, you're set. If you don't find a good product, it's not gonna be good. And you know, so many people that get started with Amazon, they, they're looking for products, they're looking for products, they're spending weeks looking for products, they're doing it without a course, they're doing it without a mentor, they find a product, it looks awesome, in the uh, in Jungle Scout, it looks awesome with the numbers, revenue, you know, making revenue, low reviews. They go, they spend three thousand dollars on a starting order, even though I only spent eighteen hundred. You don't need to spend that much on a starting order, and they source it, they get it, and it gets into Amazon, and boom, you get an email from Amazon saying that your product has been removed because it's restricted or it's patented or it's trademarked, and that's the worst possible thing that can happen on Amazon. That is the worst. That is the, the biggest mistake that you can make. And that is the most common mistake you will make if you don't invest into a course and if you don't get a mentor. So, you know, that's why I recommend always, always, always invest in yourself. If you're gonna try to make $100,000 a year, you're gonna try to build a million dollar business, then you have to invest in yourself, you know? And a $500 uh, course and training is a tiny price to pay uh, in exchange for the achievement of your goals and dreams, you know, so. 
Does anybody have VAs here? Yes, I do. I just hired one. I just hired two this week. Uh, thanks for answering my questions, Dan. It's greatly appreciated. My wife and I will be getting the course for sure. Now my mind is made up. Thanks again. Enjoy your new home. It's phenomenal. Thank you so much, Nathan. Uh, I'm looking forward to mentoring you. And I promise you it's going to be... It's going to be a life-changing decision for you, you know, because even though the course, let's say you start Amazon and you are successful with it, that's amazing. Let's say you start it, maybe it's not for you. Well, at least you're aware and, and you know, you're aware of the massive opportunities. Now you'll keep searching for success and you'll, you'll be aware of what's, what's really possible in your life. But I'm sure that, you know, I know one thing for sure, anybody watching this, if you are going to stick to it and if you have the correct information and the correct knowledge, like we live in the information age, you need the correct information to uh, succeed. If you don't have the correct information, if you don't have the information that is uh, making the millionaires out there on Amazon, and that is you know, working for so many successful people, then you will simply not be successful. So, all right, let's get into how to go from zero to a million on Amazon. So let's say we're starting with a thousand dollars, all right? And I'm gonna give you guys a good example of a million dollar brand here. I always use this example, but it is a really, really, really good example and an amazing way to do Amazon. And this brand is called Coffee Gator. And if you go and do a, a simple uh, search on Amazon for Coffee Gator, that is an example of what a million dollar brand looks like. All right, search that up, study it, you know, worship this because that is how, that is the answer. You can see they've got consistent branding, consistent logos, you know, consistent design and it's beautiful the, the pictures every single picture is amazing they got a ton of reviews on their on their product because people are obviously so happy with it um, and biggest thing guys I'm gonna let you know on the biggest secret consumer psychology on Amazon and with any e-commerce platform with any product uh, there's always there always has to be a correlation between price and perceived value and one of the biggest reasons people fail with Amazon with e-commerce is that there is zero correlation between their price and the perceived value. A lot of the times, people are trying to charge you know, $30 for a product or $25 for a product, but the, li but the listing shows the product in a light where it's, you know, it's re really terrible. And so with Coffee Gator, I'm on the listing right now, Coffee Gator stainless steel container, like they're charging $30 right now. It's really, really beautiful. Here, I'm going to show you guys on my phone. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Have you guys seen Coffee Gator? No. Search them up. That is the way to do Amazon. All right. So I I got the the uh, listing over here. You found them? Yeah. Look how beautiful their their listings are. And search up if you pull up Jungle Scout on them. Each product is making 40, 40 thousand a month each. And it's all consistent. So it's a coffee brand, all right? Look, look at that. You see that? So their price is $29.97. I'm prepared to pay $50 for this because the value in my head for this, the perceived value is $50. So, you know, you, in a, uh, with, with a customer, with a person, when they're looking at your listing, in, in a split second, their mind will make up a number in their head that, okay, if the price is close to this, I'll buy it. If it's not, I won't buy it. And it all depends on how you, how you uh, make your product to be perceived by the customer. If it looks premium, if the pictures are great, um, you know, if it's good box design, then you will be able to charge that price. And it's so important to understand that. So when you're starting with a product and you're looking for, uh, let's say you start with $1,000, $1,500 uh, with Amazon, Let's say you invest into a course, get into Econ Freedom, it's $497. Uh, and then you know, you're looking for products, you send the products over to me, and then you know, I say it's good. It will take you about a week or two weeks to find a product, maybe three weeks, maybe a month if you're not putting much time in. It shouldn't take you that long though. Then once you find a product, uh, you, know, you invest into it, you do not put $5,000 into it. That's a big mistake. Do not put $10,000 into it. This is not Las Vegas. It's not a casino. You, know, you don't need to do, put that much money in. Right now, we're just trying to test the market. And we're trying to see if this product will sell and if there is enough demand for this product. Like, you know, even though other sellers are selling it, I want to know if my version of the product is going to sell. And so you're starting with, that's how you're able to start with like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. And so you got the product up. You want to make sure that your listing for the product, your pictures, you want to like, you know, over deliver on the pictures, over deliver on everything with your listing. And you want to make it look like this. All right. And there are many examples on Amazon, on Amazon USA, of amazing million-dollar brands. 
Um, and the re how they got there was, of course, with time. With time, the value of an asset, the value of a brand grows. So, and that's another amazing part about Amazon is that you're building a real business. It's not some kind of a get rich quick scheme. It's not some kind of a pyramid scheme or, you know, whatever it is. Like, you're just selling products online and you're selling products using the most powerful way and the best way to sell products, the, the best platform on the internet for that in 2019. So, um, yeah, so you start with one and you do everything in your power. You put 100% into really, you know, really make sure that it starts selling. And you, you start building brand equity slowly. People in that target market will get to know you. And like, look at this, look at the product description, guys. You know, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. So if you're watching Coffee Gator, you guys should send me some free product in Finland. Like you guys are awesome. So, you know, you've got the founder story in here. So, you know, really over deliver on the listing. And then, you know, slowly with the profits from your first product, you want to reinvest into a second and third product that is related to your first product that serves the same target market that your first product serves. Okay. So let's say your first product was making 10,000 a month. Um, that's awesome. Now your second product, you know, might get you up to 12 or 14 or 20 or 30 if it's a really big hit. And so slowly but surely, my rule is, my rule of thumb is one product a month. Do not release more than one product a month. It's overkill and you're just gonna, it's all gonna topple down. One product a month will allow you to have enough focus to keep going. So, you know, then eventually you're gonna hit 20, 30K a month, 40K a month, right? And of course, like, you know, you're having, you're moving a lot of inventory by now. And so the magic number to hit a million uh, in a year in revenue, all right, is, let me see, per day, it's $2,777 a day, all right? And trust me, like I've hit this number and it might sound crazy, but it's not a crazy number. It's just math. Business is just math. There's no emotion associated with business. Unfortunately, most people associate emotion and fear with business. So the way to do that is slowly expand. You know, you're actually creating a brand and make sure the brand name actually has something to do with your product. If it's some random brand name, it doesn't make any sense. And you also want to expand, create social media platforms for your product, Instagram, uh, you know, start getting influencers and really start spreading the word. I highly recommend to send influencers free product in exchange for them having it on, um, like doing a promotion for it on their Instagram. Sometimes you have to pay a little bit, you know, 50 to $100, $200, depending on the follower count. Start building an email list and also then transition to Shopify. Once you have three to five products, open up a Shopify store, start running Facebook ads and that way, now you're slowly, you know, but surely exponentially growing. And eventually you will, hit a, you will hit a million if your product brand looks like Coffee Gator and something like this. So that's how you do it. Let me see this. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let me read some of these. What work do you, what, what work do your VAs do? Amazon, Shopify, a lot for my Shopify and a lot for my Amazon and also for my course. Um, <clears throat> happened to me for, I got four product failures and now I finally invested into your course. Thank you so much, Dan. I would have saved, uh, hundreds if I bought your course first, LOL. Well, yeah, you know, but unfortunately people think that they can do it on their own. So, you know, when I first started, I invested into many courses, uh, and you know, without that, I would not be where I am today. This was years ago. So. Anyway, guys, I think that's the end of this live. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoyed this. And every single Saturday, we do a live Q&A uh, uh, on the channel. So next week, it's going to be Shopify. And follow me on Instagram. Link is down below. I finally have the Instagram name, Dan Vass. So that's awesome. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.